What's up peeps? Today I thought I'd give you guys a bit of an update what is going on with all my cars. In particular, the Corollas. If you paid attention to some of the videos, you would actually know that I own three K70s at the moment. This one right here being my main daily. I've got another car, definitely a project. Uh, it's in primer at the moment, getting some body work. And I've also got my Drift SR21. So I've got a few and thought I'd just let you guys know what's going on with them all. This one, I meant to do a fair few more videos on this car, but unfortunately every time I work on it, I'm always in a rush, usually it's straight after work or during lunches and didn't really get a chance to film anything. But I'll give you guys an update of where this car's at. Since that first video, when I first got the car, I did actually decide that I'm going to be selling this one and I have actually sold it to a mate of mine already. He's taking delivery of it when I get my Aristo back then. So this is still my current daily. I was technically sold it two plus months ago now. And yeah, she's still going strong. Oh. The biggest thing that's happened to this is the 5K actually came out of it because that is the motor I plan on keeping and uh, doing a little bit more work to. But that is out in my garage at the moment. This has got a stock 4K back in it now because uh, that's what I was selling it with. I've had to do a bit of maintenance on it though. So we've got a new water pump, um, thermostat, flush to cooling system. I um, was just having a few cooling issues, figured we'd get it all sorted. And it cost like 140 bucks in parts to get everything we needed to basically overhaul the whole cooling system. Can't go wrong with that. Oh, Corollas. It looks relatively clean at the moment. That's only because I just came back from the car wash. The rubber cover gasket on this is pissing out and that is an understatement. I only just put a new rocket cover gasket on the 5k not so long ago before it came out of this car so I'm just going to pull that gasket off and put it on this. You'll also notice we have an air filter. Haven't had one on there for a while since a clip broke on it. I did get a new kit that uses a uh, different mounting plate and clips but haven't put it on there yet because the oil leak was that bad it was pretty much drinking its own oil and I didn't really want to have to clean the filter again. It's an old K she can deal with no filter for a little while. But anyway, hopefully with the oil leak fixed, I'll put the new filter kit on it as well. And that will be all we need to do there. And I'll get around to doing a service on it soon too. This has still got the oil in it that was sitting in the motor for many, many years whilst it was in my grey car, came out of the other car. And I never changed it since it's been something to this. You obviously saw we put the wheels on it, but she's sitting a lot lower now. So the rear end has the same shocks, but we had pedal springs in there before. Now it's got stock springs cut down to the height we want. Uh, it's still quite stiff but a little bit better than if we cut down those pedal springs, which are already stiff at stock height. Because these rear springs sit on the diff and they don't actually have a flat perch, cutting them down, generally, you can actually make them sit in their seat all right and there's no issues, other than the fact that if you cut it too short, they're not captive without a shorter stroke shock. I do have a plan for the solution for a shock in the future, because I probably cut it in half compared to factory. Um, the tail on them was too far, much of an angle and it didn't sit right in the, uh, spring perch, so we actually heated that up, folded it flat, that last half of a bit of the spring. Um, works a treat. Front I might not have a photo of, but it's actually got S13 coilovers in it that the bases, it's a base light, base light adjustable coilover, has been welded to the cut down stub of a K70. This is actually almost full ride height because the S13 shock is so much shorter than a K70 strut, but that's all right with us. So very, very stiff in the front. Same problem I ran into in the drift car K. The shocks are blown and it's got eight kilo fronts, so <laughs> she's pretty bouncy, but actually not as bad as the drift car. And on top of that, interior niceties, we've uh, got rid of that disgusting wheel that came on the car. Um, and we've gone for something a little bit more period correct and sporty. So it does say sass, but it's actually a Momo wheel. Um, and we've just thrown in a bucket seat. This actually came out of the K70 that we pulled apart in an earlier video. It's a little worn out, but it's much, much, much nicer sitting in this than it was into the factory seat. The base was completely collapsed and I was basically falling through it every time I got in it. That's about all that's happened to this car. It's been a little bit, but it's over, over a few months. So anyway, today we'll put the rocket cover gasket in and put the air filter kit on it. And then I'll give you a bit of an update of what's going on with the other cars. Get the throttle cable attached. So we've just popped the other rocket cover gasket off the 5K that came out of it, uh, as well as the new top two seals. There's also spark plug seals. Now, I would like to swap those over, but I don't actually have a spark plug socket here, so might do that someday at work. So all I have today is a shifter and a screwdriver. That's enough to do a rocket cover gasket in a case, Emmy.
Rock cover gasket is done. This breather is still open. So I'm gonna just steal the hose that I had on this one. It was still routed to nowhere, but at least it's not completely exposed. I can tuck it down where I want it to shoot. Most people just put a little air filter on it, but I prefer to have a hose so it vents away from everything because the air filters just clog up. Anyway, so we'll get the new air filter bracket on, which is just a couple of screws, bolt that on, and away we go. One thing I forgot to mention, because it is s in front coilovers, you actually do have to drill a hole. It's about eight millimeters or 10 millimeters further out, just next to another hole. And then s coilovers go straight into these. Even like s front cross members, you can pretty much bolt them straight in. You elongate two of the subframe holes, like five millimeters, and everything bolts straight up, which is what's done in my drift car. Um, so it's why a lot of people put s front ends in this. It is not the way I recommend going, because they really do need a fair bit of work and modification to work properly in these chassis. But it is definitely an option. Um, one, if you want to put power steering in nice and easily, you've got some heavy motor that's going in it. Or if you're bolting an SR in it, definitely an easier option. But going off personal experience, I would stick with the Toyota front end. I had that to start with. The only reason mine ended up with an S chassis front end is I actually crashed my car so bad I ripped out every bit of Toyota part in it. And rather than custom make everything, I went with the simpler solution of putting an SR in front end in it. But it did bite me a bit because it took quite a while to get that car to drive right. A um, few custom arms, custom knuckles, a bunch of other stuff. Anyway, just thought I'd give you a little bit more information. So yeah, we're back, rock cover back on. We'll find some tools, pull this plate off. Got another filter here. Mm. This is, this is different. Oh no. This is a filter for a different carby. So, or a different version of this carby with round barrels. So that is never gonna work. I didn't buy it, this uh, was actually just given to me from my mate that bought the car, um, he had it in a box, so yeah, like I said, this car sold, I'm just doing everything I can to make sure that I give it to him in as good a condition as possible, and give myself as nice, reliable daily as I can. This filter is a slightly different shape, the edges are way squarer. As you can see, I'm uh, going with the new filter and top hat because this filter is actually, despite being in shape, it's actually a tiny bit smaller, so it does still fit into there. And the clips that come with them were a lot shorter than the other one, so it wouldn't work with the other filter anyway. So better to have one on there than not, and it looks like this will work. So. All right, that uh, sticky stuff definitely left a residue on there. That's on that bloody tight, hopefully that holds together. This is our hose we're running on the other motor. All right, so that's mounted onto that. I'm just gonna go grab a cable tie. What we'll do is we'll tie that hose up to this. So to vent, it has to go up and then down, which means it should be able to vent oil uh, vapors without actually dripping oil down. Whereas if we mounted that straight down, it probably would. And just like that, we're all done. New filter on, new rock cover gasket. Um, tied up the hose. So we'll swap out that. Under the leads, there's uh, spark plug tubes that look like this. There's an O-ring around these. So what I might do, because these plugs are new as well, is we might just pull these ones all out and put them straight into that motor. Um, I've got a whole new gasket kit for this motor anyway. so. Might as well use it on this one. So now that we're done with the maintenance on this one, I guess we'll give you a bit of an update what's going on with everything else. Whilst I am going to be super sad this car is going, because I have obviously formed a bit of attachment to it and I do love it, it is okay because I do have that other grey one and that is the one I'm planning on booting into a cleaner street car. It was pretty much a choice between get rid of the other one or get rid of this one. This one was much more complete as it was to get rid of, but the other car also has had a lot further rust repairs, and full metal rear pockets and stuff done on the uh, back of the car. And it's getting a lot of rust pairs at the moment, just in the boot lips and fuel flap, the usual common places on K70s. So it will be 100% rust free and it's going to be entirely stripped apart. The plan is to make that a really clean street car. It will probably take a little while to get going because I won't be able to afford the paint and stuff I want to do on it straight away. I don't want to bother putting it together until it can be the way that I want it to. So yeah, hopefully the prep and stuff on the body will be done soon. Hopefully if you're painting on engine bay um, and under the car, and get everything pretty well sorted to go for that thing and then we can just wait for paint and then assembly. That thing should be pretty cool. I bought a whole bunch of stuff for the K70 that was gonna go on this. I bought chrome buffer bars, uh, fender mirrors, a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, lots and lots of crap that never ended up making its way to this car because we 
change planes a bit, you get to see all that stuff on the next K70. So yes, sadly there won't be much of an update more on this car. Anymore. So there's definitely going to be no real more major changes to this car before it goes. Get keen for the other car though, because that is going to be very in depth. Um, and we'll spend a lot of time in that car and take you along for the ride. Part of what's going on with that build is we are still sticking with the K-Series engine. Not Honda, don't get too excited. But uh, So we've got the 5K that came out of this car when I bought it, which is a 1.5 litre version of the same engine. Instead of the 1.3, it comes with factory. This motor's already been rebuilt. It's done approximately 44,000 Ks since the motor was rebuilt about 11, 12 years ago. But we want to push that motor a little bit harder and uh, have a bit more fun with it. It already had a, a, a light street cam in it, so we're going to definitely get something ground up to be a bit more aggressive. So. Well, the stock cam made of another spare motor I've got. Then we're going to send this one off with them to Clive Cams. And what they're going to do is work out, one, what I've got in that motor, um, and then they're going to modify and regrind the stock cam to be something super aggressive. I want big chop. I want it to rev to 8,000, like pulling all the way to 8,000. Well, as much as a 5K can pull. So we've got to get the flywheel lightened or a lightweight flywheel. If anyone knows of any aftermarket options that aren't ridiculously expensive, I will definitely consider it, but... The only ones I can find for them are like seven, eight hundred dollars for a flywheel, which I'm not spending on this car. We hopefully won't have to touch the bottom end. We'll double check the uh, bearings are looking alright. They are. That's going to stay as it is. Uh, but we've got all new gaskets for it, new water pump for this motor as well. Now the cool thing with this motor is we're going bike carbs on it. Um, that I'm super keen for. So big cam, lightweight flywheel, bike carbs. Pretty much what we're going to do with the car. It's going to have extractors and exhaust just like this one. So I would really, really really love to see if we can get like 90 kilowatt out of it which sounds like a low power goal but 90 kilowatt out of a 5k is pretty ridiculous and uh i know it's doable hopefully we'll be able to do it without losing too much street drivability that's a bit of an update of what's going to be happening with the next car as you can imagine there is so much going on right now so many different cars so many different events to go ready for it's the end of the year there's a bunch going on so this guy's nearly finished it's going We've got a GS around here, which I don't think I've seen, you've seen in the videos, but that was bought as a parts car for the other car, plus a motor donor for hopefully a future project. So we've got the 2 is a G in this car, BBTI, that'll come out. Uh, I need a few things like front and rear bumper bars. It's um, GS 300s don't have rear steering, unlike the Aristos, so I'm taking that rear subframe out. We're going to do a whole refresh on that and put it into the other car. So a bunch going on here, uh, but that car needs to go ASAP, so hopefully we're stripping that soon. Might make a video about that too. So there we go. Let me know if that's something you want to see. We're just pretty much going to be pulling it apart to a bare shell and then scrapping it. I've got exciting news with the 13 and with the Drift K70. Drift K70 basically bought out that car to pull the SR out of it for a Sylvia shell that I have lying around that you'll see soon enough. Basically fell in love with it again. Then I decided I want an NA beater so I can hang with all my NA mates and just have a blast. That's why there's another SR over here. This is a DET, but has 264 cams, um, has a spun bottom end, so we do need to rebuild it. The plan was to rebuild this, put 12 to 1s in it on the 85 and have that as the rowdy NA car. But, now this is still up in the air, there is a chance, because we're going to be trying to do two championships next year. If we can, we're trying to make a South Australian uh, Interstate Championship, it's five rounds. And the Battle Royale Championship, which is three rounds towards the start of the year next year. Because of that scheduling, uh, we might be running some rounds in the K, some in the S13. Not sure exactly what it is yet, but it means it can't be NA because it's not going to be competitive. So whilst that is potentially still a future plan, it's definitely not happening at the moment. That motor is state. The SR20 DT is what's staying in the car. We're going to turn the boost back up a little bit. Had it at wastegate pressure on Drift X, which was fun, but not going to be competitive. So we'll turn the boost back up a bit. We've got a few other things to do to get that car ready, but particularly as you would have seen, I broke the back end of that car apart. It is done for. Uh, it is well overdue. It is now getting a tube rear. So we're gonna cut the floor out of that, tube the back, fuel cell, you know, surge tank, all the rest of it, whole new fuel system, and a couple other suspension stuff. I've just rambled off not even everything that's going on in my life at the moment, but as you can see, there is way too much to cover and I'm sure some things will get left behind and we'll work out our priorities as time goes on. You will definitely be seeing that SRK soon because we're doing some work on that regardless of what happens with it. We'll definitely be able to see the GS 100 soon if you guys want to because I'm definitely, I want that car gone by the end of the year. I have more than enough projects to give you guys all the content of the world next year. But as you can imagine, trying to drift as well, plus work full time, plus I work after hours, finding the time to do that stuff when I do get the time to work on cars, which is actually kind of rare these days, Plus editing, takes a lot. Got to pick and choose where we spend our time 
Obviously, the drifting is one of the big things for me. I want to try and do as much as I can with that. I've had a blast this year. Um, so many fun rounds, so much fun drifting, meeting new people and just exciting times all around. And obviously, this is the first year we pretty much did our YouTube thing. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. I've enjoyed making it, despite it being quite a challenge and learning a few new things. And once again, there's so much time that goes into this. So props to all the guys that do this nonstop. Uh, it is a hell of an effort. Anyway, I'll quit rambling here. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed a bit of an update and I'll catch you guys soon. Peace.